endogenous growth, exogenous growth, or inclusive growth. What does it mean? Let's start with the endogenous growth. As its name suggests, it's indicative of internal growth or local growth or self-sustained growth. It's based on two substrates, which are the accumulation of capital fundamentally embodied by labor and capital, and the spill of positive externalities, which means positive effect without counterpart. Is it the theory of the endogenous growth refined by three economists, first with Romer, who considers innovative physical as the engine of growth, Lucas, who considers human capital as the source of economic growth, and finally, Bero, who considers public capital as a source of growth. Let's move on to the exogenous growth. By its name, it's an external growth, and its founding father is the American economist Robert Solow, who explained that the two factors of production, namely capital and labor, may lead to poor productivity or maybe a limited production and a stationary state. Since he thought of other relays of growth, in this case the quality of economic, social, legal institutions, the improvement of the works quality and finally the technical progress. Is it what we call the total factor productivity or multifactorial productivity? It is important to remember that the TFP can generate up to 60% of economic growth. Let's move on to another type of growth called inclusive growth, which is therefore intended to be comprehensive and uh, integral. It relies on several spheres in addition to achieving economic growth that remains an intermediate objective. It is supposed to include a sustainable natural resources, a fair sharing of dividends among all citizens by promoting their well-being. To measure inclusive growth, we refer to the Gini index, which tells us about the level of inequality in a population. The more it increases, the wider the inequality gap becomes. The following map from 2018 shows very high inequality in Brazil, China, and India. Almost strong inequality is like the United States, Morocco, and Australia, whose Gini index ranges from 34 to 38%. And finally, reduced inequalities, especially in Scandinavian countries such as Sweden, Norway, as well as Germany, Australia, France, and Netherlands. 